So this is a new one for me. I haven't taken a look at a Palkia device yet for this channel. I've looked at Retroid, Mew, and definitely Ambernick, but not Pal Kitty. They're probably the only ones in the Retroid handheld market that I haven't covered yet. Well, besides Ein as well, but their handhelds cost hundreds of dollars. No way I'm paying for that. The reason I haven't checked out Pal Kitty yet for this channel is because the quality of their handheld seems very questionable to me, but today I'm ripping the Pal Kitty Band-Aid off by checking out one of their latest handhelds, the V10. And it's certainly interesting. I didn't hate this, but I didn't love this either. Let's of course start with what we have on the outside. On the front we have our D-pad, which is kinda mushy for me, I'm not a fan of it. Face buttons, which also feel okay, nothing special. We have our start and select buttons, as well as minus and plus. On the bottom, we have our SD card slot and headphone jack. And on the back, we have our four shoulder buttons, clicky as usual. And finally on the top, we have our power button, reset button, charging port, and an OTG port for stuff like connecting the controller. You probably didn't notice, but I didn't mention two particular buttons that we usually find on most of the portal emulators, at least all the ones that I've looked at so far. And that is our volume up and down buttons. That's because the V10 doesn't have them. So how do we adjust volume then? Well, the operating system this runs on, ArcOS, has hotkeys for adjusting the volume, as well as other things like exiting a game, adjusting the brightness, making and loading a save state, and using fast forward. I get having hotkeys for stuff like save states and fast forward, but why the volume and the ability to exit a game? My Mio Mini Plus just has physical buttons I can press for those basic functions. Now, they do give you instructions on what the hotkeys are, so you don't have to just figure them out yourself. So I could forgive the whole hotkeys thing entirely. Except the instructions are useless because they're wrong! I had to cross out the instructions it gave me and put my own, so I ended up having to figure out the hotkeys myself anyway. And I don't even know if it's going to be the same for everyone else. You might get correct instructions or have completely different hockeys than the instructions show, or maybe even different hockeys entirely from what mine turned out to be. So this docks a lot of points for it in my opinion. I just think it's dumb that they make you use hockeys for basic stuff like volume and exiting a game. And even dumber to give you completely wrong instructions. But honestly, it won't really take you that long to remember these hotkeys. I just think it leaves a really bad first impression with the V10. I still like this device, mind you. I just really need to get that off my chest because it really annoyed the hell out of me. Like, it took me quite a bit to figure out how to adjust the volume on here. As far as comfort goes when playing this, I mean, it's really not that much more comfortable than just holding a Mi Mini Plus. It's kind of like just holding my wallet, really, if I held it like this, but a bit thicker, if I'm being honest. I am happy to say, at least, that while this device has its weird perks, it does still play games pretty damn well. Say it with me, folks, this thing can play your NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Genesis, Game Gear, Master System, and PlayStation 1 games. Hallelujah! Now, why did I not mention Game Boy Advance? Well, because that's pretty much the main selling point of the V10. In case you haven't noticed, we have a 3x2 aspect ratio screen, which is the same aspect ratio as the original Game Boy Advance. So naturally, games fill up the whole screen, and they look pretty damn good on it. So this is a fantastic Game Boy Advance machine, especially if you're trying to play your Pokemon games. And with that fast forward hockey, this is pretty much the complete package for somebody with that in mind, as well as people trying to get into emulation since this is only 40 bucks. You know, it does feel like this review was rather short, but honestly guys, I don't really know what else to say about this thing. I mean, other than of course the pros and the cons of it. Do I recommend this handheld? Yes. I think this is a great handheld for people who want to get into portable emulation for the cheap, as well as for people who only care about Game Boy Advance games. I get that, because as far as 2D systems, I mostly have Game Boy Advance ROMs more than anything else. I just think this device isn't for me really. The whole time I was messing with this, I was just thinking I could be playing all these games on my Mew Mini Plus instead. 
Because while I do love how Game Boy Advance games look on here, they also look just as fine on the Mio Mini Plus. And I also have physical buttons to turn the volume up and down and to just exit a game. And with the Mio, you have pretty much one of the best custom firmwares out there that you can get for a portable emulator right now. With what I consider to be one of the best experiences with portable emulation. Again, I like the V10. I really do. I just think it isn't for me. But that doesn't mean it can't be for you. If you love Game Boy Advance games and don't want to break the bank too much, this is basically perfect for you. Once again, the V10 is only $40 compared to the Mi Mini Plus, which is about $60 to $70 depending on where you buy it from. Which isn't too bad either, but if you're trying to save up as much as possible, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't get this. But what do you guys think about the PAL Kitty V10? Do you like it? Do you already have it? What are your thoughts in the comment section down below? And as always, any constructive criticism for these videos is more than welcome, so I can improve on this content in the future. And with that, I will see you all next time.